Good morning. Everyone can hear me? So you're all ready for my super vague talk? Yeah? Um, so as they said, my name is Joanna Smith, and I am a developer advocate for Android. So what that means is that my main job is to somehow inspire and empower you to do great things with Android. Um, so when I was asked to give this talk, I had to think about how do you become inspiring? You know, some of us are born with it, but for everybody else, um, how do you sit down and find a way to make people want to do something? So I was sitting there and I was brainstorming and I was trying to think back on my own experiences with Android because sometimes when you're trying to figure out how you feel about something like being an Android developer, it helps to remember where you came from. And so with that, I thought that I would begin today with a walk down memory lane. So being an engineer, I wanted to be methodical about this. And I went to our Android statue garden, and I started looking around. But the statues aren't in order, so that was annoying. Um, but I wanted to look at each platform version and remember all of those good old days, except for one problem. I wasn't actually there for all of those good old days. Uh, they happened before I came along, and all of those statues were already firmly planted in that garden by the time I took up the Android life. So all of that shining optimism you see with that intern, it was just quickly squashed. Like, there's no way to inspire Android developers if you don't even have a backstory, right? But I'm a problem solver, and so I decided I will get my backstory. I will just steal it from everybody else. So after I stole a backstory, I was ready for my walk down memory lane. Now, as we stroll back here, I want you to think of all of those good times that you had with each platform release and all of those really happy memories you had in these early days. OK? Everyone's ready? Good. So let's start with, hello, Cupcake. Um, Cupcake, as you know, is about seven years old now. And it came with this wonderful phone. Did anybody else have the T-Mobile G1? Yeah? Like, you loved that baby, didn't you? Just the best phone you've ever held. I know it. Um, and I remember building my first app for the T-Mobile G1 um, so that I could reorder all these really cool bookmarks and have some control, except I actually didn't do that. That was rich. Uh, like I said, I wasn't there. But he built this really cool app way in the early days. Some of you may recognize his face. He's on my team. He gives talks. He goes to the Android Dev Summit. Um, and this was the cool part about joining the DevRel team is there were actually some people who were there at the very beginning when we were first going public and then loved Android so much they later came to our team to help the other developers. But anyway, so T-Mobile G1, really happy for all of you guys who had one. Um, so by the time Donut came out a year later, the Android community seemed relatively stable. Like the, it was pretty well established, um, and especially here in Berlin. So I don't know how many of you are Berlin natives, but the way I understand it, you even established this wonderful Guinness World Record early on in Android's um, life with this Blink Android app that was started on Donut and came out a few years later when it was finally finished. Um, but at the time, there were only a few Android devices. There was like the G1 and the HTC Magic or the HTC Desire and the Nexus One. Um, so way back when, in those early days, we started making this really cool app here in Berlin because I was totally there. Um, and when it was finally ready, Blink Android was cool because everybody could come up and put their phone on the table and one image would scale across every phone. They didn't have to match, they didn't have to be the same, and somehow everyone wanted to like give their phone to somebody else to maybe not break. So pretty trusting back then, proud of you guys. Um, but building this app was a really interesting challenge in these days because you had to figure out how to scale one image across so many devices, being four. I know that's a lot. I mean, it would be ridiculous to have more than four devices. Um, but you had to scale one image across multiple screens, resolutions, what's going on. You needed to make sure that if one phone dropped out, like the whole image wasn't broken. And so I remember settling on this heartbeat approach, right, where if you could give someone like a 30, 30 second grace period, and then if you had like a start time in the heartbeat, they could figure out where they're supposed to be if they're a little laggy. And that was just a really clever engineering challenge and a really fun day 
for Vin. You guys know Vin? Because again, I wasn't here. So this is my borrowed backstory. Um, Vin actually was running a lot of the Android um, Berlin outreach and community way back when, before he joined our team and abandoned all of you for the sunny shores of London. Anyway, so that was Donut, and we get to Eclair. And by now, the Android developer community, I'm sure you all remember because everybody was there, it was so strong. It was so strong, in fact, that this guy, Ray Meyer, went around handing out free devices. He was like, please, please develop for me. Please, anybody? Anybody want to develop for me? So who got a free device from Ray Meyer? There we go. Um, and I'm sure you all recognize him, but if you don't, this might make more sense. He works really hard for Android, right? Like, he's always focused, definitely never in a bad mood. Um, but yeah, he went around actually handing out devices because he actually cared so much about getting people invested in Android and building applications that it was worthwhile to just do a tour and just pass them around. I think some people ended up with 13 or so. And I was really excited that he did this because I love getting free stuff. But he didn't come to my university, so still don't have an Android phone, guys. Um, so maybe I should start speeding up, right? We want to get to the part where it's my story. Uh, so Froyo happened, and... There were some interesting features, that was great, and you know, you could now have a hotspot functionality, which I'm sure nobody ever uses, because what good is that, uh, except for me every day, every minute. Um, and then the best thing about Froyo is that there are still those three people out there who haven't updated yet, so it is the longest lived platform release I think we've ever had, so that's pretty cool. Um, moving on to Gingerbread, and this really cool Nexus S phone that came out. Do you remember this one? Who had the Nexus S, right? Like how exciting it was when it was super heavy in your hand and you could like, wait, no, I didn't have one. I still am not an Android person yet. Why am I not in the story? Um, so Honeycomb, we all have a lot to say about Honeycomb, right? Yeah, good things, good things. So as Rado put it, remember this guy? Everything about Honeycomb was awful. That's his summary. That's the official statement from Rado Meyer. You can go to Twitter with that. Um, but Nick Butcher didn't like that comment. He thought that was really offensive. <laughs> Don't laugh at Nick Butcher's face. He was really upset that day. And it turns out that Honeycomb is Nick's favorite platform release. And for a guy who spends a lot of time on stage explaining good design, I was pretty surprised to hear this especially since Honeycomb is what I would consider a particularly difficult release, because I was there. Um, it was actually designed exclusively for tablets, as everybody in this room knows, and it was closed source, which was odd. But what Nick pointed out, and I consider to be a fair argument, is that this was the first moment that Android really started thinking about design. This is when animators were introduced, and the hollow theme was actually brought to Honeycomb first. And he made such a good argument, and I didn't have a counter argument because I wasn't there, that I was forced to acknowledge that maybe Honeycomb was pretty cool. You can decide for yourself. But then we get to Ice Cream Sandwich, where it took the best parts of Honeycomb and Gingerbread and then merged them together into an open source platform release again. And so, that was pretty cool to return to our open source lifestyle, but also we removed the menu button, if you remember, our little menu button. That was a good little buddy, and now he's gone. But that's okay, because this is Rich's favorite release, and he defends that opinion against all odds. Um, and as he puts it, this was the moment. Ice Cream Sandwich was the moment when the world realized that Android was a real player, that we were here to stay, and that our apps were awesome. So good job all seven of you. <laughs> um, but what I've got to say is that I'm really happy that I could be a part of it at the ice cream sandwich stage, because I think, like he said, this is when it all came together, except I'm still lying. I wasn't in Android yet, because I guess I didn't care about mobile phones at all. But I am happy to admit, at this point, I got an Android phone. So I was one of your users. You're welcome. Uh, but I hadn't taken up the life of the mobile developer yet. That's okay, because now we get to talk about Jellybean. And Jellybean actually is my favorite, not because of the platform, but because of a fun story we have internally at Google. Um, and you're all a very patient audience, so I'm sure you don't mind me going on a side here. But in Mountain View, we have our statue garden, and this is the Jellybean statue standing guard over the front door and protecting everybody who works on Android from whomever may come to distract them, all of the web guys. Um, 
but it just protects us and provides a bit of happy color. And the problem is, it wasn't actually always this way. It turns out that that first jelly bean statue, it wasn't designed very well. And the first iteration of it had this clear topped head. And so the head wasn't attached when we got the statue. And everybody on the team got to carry a jelly bean into the statue. And then we sealed it up. And then it got kind of warm. Turns out California does get warm. It's bright and sunny there. And as the heat warmed all the plaster jelly beans, it caused a bit of a problem. Um, but that's okay because then we got him a new head and a couple fewer jelly beans, and now he sits happily guarding our space. And sadly, I missed this day too, but only by a few months. So now we come to KitKat. And KitKat was the very first Android launch that I was at Google for. And that was a really cool thing to be a part of. And so you all know Chris Baines. I'm sure every single person went to his talk yesterday because, you know, it's Chris Baines. But he's basically the driving force behind the material design library and the support library right now. And if you've got any feature requests, make sure you find him today so you can tell him in person. He loves that. Um, but. The point is, if a guy writes half the support library, then he probably knows something about the different Android versions, right? Like if anybody was going to, it would be the person designing for every single level. And he said that KitKat was his favorite version, and so that is a top tip for you. Which means that we all just need to stop right now and everyone go back to KitKat, right? Because his reasoning was so sound. And his argument? It ran quick. That's the whole thing. That's all he had to say. But now we come to Lollipop. And Lollipop had some really cool moments because this was our first developer preview. And that meant that you could test the entire platform before it was finalized. It introduced material design, which actually gave Nick and Chris a purpose in life. And most importantly, this is when I jumped on the Android train. I'm finally an Android developer, and I have so much to say. So I was pretty excited to use my Java background on something fun, right? Because it's clearly very easy to transition from Java to Android mobile development. Like, they're basically the same, right? Um, they're not. It was a bit hard. I tended to fall head over heels. But we're not going to focus on the bad times. Like, we're excited, right? We're just going to stay with that happy face. Um, but it turns out that it's actually really difficult to be new to something so late in its development and also to not really understand how clever the system is with its threading and its asynchronous calls. Because if you've been working on Java your whole life and you call a method like start activity, for example, you kind of expect it to start the activity. But it likes to finish a couple of other things and then get around to starting activity. And that was um, an interesting error time for me. But by Marshmallow, I had it figured out. And I was really proud, and I was helping, and I was doing my job. And then they asked me to teach a course on Android because I was clearly the most qualified person in that room um, with my whole 11 months of experience. But why am I actually walking you through this brief history of DevRel instead of a brief history of Android? Um, and it's actually because all of these DevRel opinions are how I'm illustrating that you are actually our feedback loop, and we are your feedback loop. We like cycle together, mainly because most of us have been where you are, whether from the very beginning of Android tinkering with the early APIs, or for everybody a little more like me who jumps on the bandwagon a little late and is trying to learn and has no idea what people are talking about when they compare sync adapters to job scheduler. Like, it's okay. Like, no matter your experience level, there's somebody on our team who has been there and who gets it and who is trying to do their job to inspire and empower you. And then the really fun part is when we work together with you, we get to turn around and make sure that the framework team gets it. Because building a framework is not the same thing as using a framework. And without this whole cycle of communication, we can't actually build the best framework for developers. So when I was trying to figure out what to say, I asked all of my team members for advice. I was trying to figure out how to be inspirational and how to really motivate developers. And interestingly, it was Wojtek who said the best thing of all of them. And what he told me is that um, in the early days, there was a Google group. And a lot of you were probably members of this early Google group. And when you had a question, you just emailed the group. And most likely, Diane Hackborn would respond to your email at some point and tell you how she built the API. But um, that was pretty much your only avenue for help, unless maybe you joined the Android IRC channel. 
But now we've come so far and we've scaled so big that we actually have this coordinated effort at Google across Stack Overflow and blog posts and social media and also events like these. And we've only been able to scale Android to this incredible success because of the success of developers like you. And that's why we need a way to keep checking in on you. And that's why we're constantly trying to find a way to provide information or to answer questions or to share interesting things that you're all working on so that we can constantly take that feedback from you, take what's hard, make a better framework, and then circle back around and around in an endless dance. And so that is why Marshmallow solidified the developer preview. That's when we knew for sure we were going to keep it, we we're going to grow it, we we're going to make it better. We came up with better feedback loops for Marshmallows. So maybe some of you noticed the difference between Lollipop preview and Marshmallow preview, where we actually had your bug reports directly translated into bugs for our engineers to fix. We were able to report back on some of the changes. Um, and of course, it's hard, and we're still growing that effort. But within, we managed to do something even cooler, I think. We have this super solid preview experience that hopefully everyone has tried. Well, that even includes over-the-air updates, right? You no longer have to get the system image and flash your device and hope for the best. Like, it just every time we're ready to go, you can update for that. We also, we switched from developer keys to production keys so that you would have an easier time of testing your app and then transitioning your devices after the preview ends. But the other thing is that even though the platform isn't released, we did release the final SDK as the last step of the preview. And the idea here is now you can have all of your production-ready apps in the Play Store before the first software update hits the user's notification tray. And the whole time we've been going through this preview, it's been hard and weird and awkward, but the entire time was to make it so that users are constantly astounded or surprised or delighted by what they see from you, and nobody's ever looking at it like, why doesn't this work? Because that's not good. So this, in case you don't know, this is Dave Burke. And Dave Burke leads up almost everything important for Android. Uh, we'll just go with that. But he stood on stage at the Android Developer Summit last November, and he wanted to explain how much of a developer focus Android puts on the platform that we build. Because he said specifically that we want to build a platform that has the application developer in mind. And we spend a lot of time actually worrying about this and thinking about our API design to make sure that we have a really good application framework. And we have actually this thing called an API council that reviews all of our new prospective APIs, their method names, their property names, every single thing, so that it feels consistent. And even more importantly, the entire framework feels like one person built it for you so that you understand what's going on if you see something new, that you have context clues. And then we also want to make sure that we have a consistency of the API across all of our devices. And so on the other end, the side that developers don't often see, we have this thing that's called a compatibility definition document. And it describes all of these requirements that a compatible Android device has to meet in order to be part of the Play Store or to put the Android brand on their phone. And then we back that up with hundreds of thousands of tests in our compatibility test suite that we're actually using to ensure any application developer can use their app on any device. So we're trying our best to make the crazy world of platform versions and multiple devices as simple for you and your app as we can. And we're continually investing in this effort so that we constantly add more tests to this test suite that everybody is required to meet. So that's pretty cool. And I was pretty impressed with like how much he cares about it. And also with the fact that it's impossible to get a, a good picture of his face. But with all this effort that we're putting in, we still have these experts that need your expertise to become legitimate developers. And I realized that the Android N preview is actually coming to a close right now, and our SDK is finalized, and we're kind of at the end of it. But we still have a lot left to build in the future, and that's why I'm standing up here trying my best to inspire you to all be active participants, not only in our previews year over year, but also in our communities and our discussions. Um, I'm actually standing here to invite you to yell at me on Twitter if you have a problem, and I know most people don't invite that kind of thing, but like that's the best way for us to make sure we have a pulse on the Android community. And also, anyone who listened to my talk yesterday, sorry, but you also know that we have a lot to learn, especially for things like background restrictions in the next few years. And if we're going to build a platform that supports the changes that we have in mind and the dreams that you have in mind, we need to work together on that. So I'm using this keynote to just basically ask you to be involved which feels a little redundant, because if you're at this conference, you're probably already involved. You're probably a community leader in your own right. So really what I want you to do is just kind of pass my message along about how needy I am and I need to hear from people so that everyone, no matter how new or how established or how expert 
they are in their field of Android still feels like they can participate in the conversation and that it's a worthwhile engagement. Okay, so I'd like to think that everybody could live in this super sh bright San Francisco sunshine, if I could even say the word, right? Like, this is the world, the mental world at least, if you don't want to pay the ridiculous rent prices, um, that you should feel like when you're hitting Android. But I also know that it's never sunny in San Francisco. That's kind of a lie. And so that's also the hard truth of application development. Um, your mental world when you're trying to write your code or test your app is usually frustrated. Um, and that can lead to either feeling abandoned or like ill used by the platform or even angry. And that's okay. Like, I'm just hoping that if you can channel that frustration into some actionable feedback for us, you'll feel like there's a little bit of hope in the future for both your app and our platform and all of the insanity that it goes to to make a really exceptional app. So that in mind, here's a few links for the preview. These are all the places where our conversation and discussion are already happening. Most of these things persist after the preview. We have an ongoing Android community that's really healthy on Google+. Um, I need you to send me your bug reports and your feature requests and your ideas, your complaints and your compliments. I just, I'd like to hear it all and everyone on my team would like to hear it. Um, Chris Baines likes to hear it personally, like one-to-one, face-to-face. -to -face. He's not shy at all. Um, but we really do need to hear from you. And also, you can yell at me on Twitter. This is how you find me. You can send me your bug reports. I will pass them along to someone who's more capable than I am if I cannot answer them myself. Um, I really am standing up here hoping that you feel that you're not just an app developer, but you're part of the Android community and that you continue to feel that way year over year. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. <laughs> And will I have to walk long ways to bring you the microphone to ask questions? Please raise your hands. Number one. Oh, Afrika, old friend, he's coming my way. Is that great? Thank you. Thank you for the review of what I have experienced. So I co-founded the DroidCon. My name is Friedke. Hi. Um, and I am, um, yeah. I yeah, want to also give my view. Um, it's great that you also mentioned Blink and Droid. That was really a cool time. Um, but I was expecting a bit more also, I don't know, how it will be in the future. So at the moment, I see there's much more professionalism and um, people want to be more efficient. So there are not so many cool projects anymore. And um, I don't know, do you see... So I think I get what you're going for. And um, the okay, way okay. that I see the changing mentality personally is Android started as a very, um, almost like a hacker project of people who really cared and really wanted to try something new and new computing. And then it managed to grow a couple years ago into, what, like I said, a major player, um, an established, well-known, well-respected um, product, right? And now we're all building on that product. And I think that over the last few releases, there has been a push to more of a consistent look and feel and more of a universal understanding. And that is true. And it could come across as trying to be more professional or... But also, I think the intent there is to make it so something users actually recognize, that there's more intuition. And the only way to make sure that intuition is guaranteed is to have some consistency between all of the apps and all of the mindsets that create the cool things. So I do agree with you. Like, there is that trend toward um, efficiency or clarity. But I don't think that that necessarily has to come at the expense of creativity. I just think that it might be maybe one step harder, and that's unfortunate. But it should still hopefully feel encouraging. And if there's something that you feel is limiting, like a specific platform change, that's very interesting. And I think that that's the kind of thing I want to talk about. OK. Yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah. There's a question. <laughs> You don't have to do my job, Friedka, thank you. <laughs> you need your steps. Hello, I would like to give you a feedback. Okay. The most popular uh, Android version is 4.4 for games. There are professional uh, simulators for Windows, and they all support just 4.4. But you ran away with 5 and now 6 and whatever, and this is not compatible anymore. For 20 years, Microsoft didn't have the problem. If there was a new version of Windows, everybody installs a new version of Windows. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it became all compatible. It just it's, went bad on the old devices. But with you, if, if you now 
have changes with five and six and say and, and, uh, the developers like to use the new features, they, they lose the contact, especially uh, to the mass, massive sales of, let's say, $100 or 100 euros 4.4 uh, devices. So, so this is a general problem that uh, you lose compatibility in mm -hmm. comparison to the Windows world, which was, Microsoft wasn't bad for 20 years. And so I do agree with you that there have been several updates in the, the most recent platforms that were um, not backwards compatible and that that were only future looking. And I would also say that it's not clearly obvious at this point, but most of our internal team also feels that pain. And we've actually begun making a much stronger investment in building compatibility libraries and expanding our support library support. And we're trying our best to go backward because there is some notion that we went forward very quickly and it's not good to have a shattered um, story. And I, so I do agree with you and you are right. Um, and I appreciate that because it's more evidence to add when, on our discussions with our PM about how important those investments are. Who else wants to ask Joanna a question? Yeah. So this might be not exactly a question, but nevertheless. So about two years ago, I think on Google I.O. it was announced that we will have a C++ support in Android Studio. Mm -hmm which is amazing, but can we now actually have a C++ support <laughs> in Android Studio? Dream big, everybody. No, um, it, is, it is a constant effort. They have not stopped working on that. Um, the, native in, or the, indie, the native development at the NDK is a growing um, concern to make sure it's as easy to use as the rest of our platform is. Um, I'm not 100% certain on the current state of it, but I do know that those discussions are constantly ongoing, and I'm getting a lot of emails um, throughout how to be able to properly edit and develop your NDK alongside the rest of your application. So it is a major concern, um, and I will look into it if you tweet me and see if I can find something more concrete for you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, first of all, for the keynote. It was really cool. So basically, you just mentioned the compatibility, like all the efforts to, to support like Compat. Um, so I'm thinking like whether this would be like the... Uh, the, the effort will be put into compatibility or rather like making it easier for vendors to provide updates so that more people go to newer Android versions and we have like less um, need to, to provide that compatibility. So what, what, what's the vector of... of so uh, we're actually working on both problems simultaneously. While we want to make sure our platform is reasonable and compatible and is something that you can rely upon, we also want to make sure that our relationships with every developer, every carrier, every OEM hardware um, creator, we want to make sure that those are stronger than they've ever been before so that they are updating at a faster rate. And so we have, we have people working at both problems at the same time and the idea is that hopefully that merges into a much better system um, overall, if that answers your question. All right. Thank you very much. Send me around. Where, where may I walk to bring over the microphone? Any more questions? Yes, I see. Yeah, I have a question concerning documentation of, uh, of the Android API. Because if I look at my everyday work as a freelance Android developer, uh, I must say roughly 60-70% of the information that I need for my job comes from Stack Overflow and not from, uh, from developers.android.com. Um, what is the strategy of, of Google and the Android team there? Currently, it feels a little bit more like uh, you guys make sure that all answer the questions on Stack Overflow are answered, and um, the the documentation on on the uh, Android pages are not updated very well. Is this going to change in the future, or are you going to uh, continue like this? So we're actually working on that right now. I can tell you honestly, because um, the honest answer to your question is we just don't have enough technical writers. So we are actively hiring. If you know anybody who wants to be a technical writer or is a technical writer, um, and the truth is that documentation is significantly harder to get right than an answer to Stack Overflow because that can 
be less formal and more casual. And so the same people who answer those Stack Overflow questions tend to be the ones that I showed you their faces. And what we are doing now is our management has asked all of us to help out with the documentation until they can catch up. And so I'm writing documentation. Other people are writing documentation. So we're basically pulling in all hands on deck to get our technical documentation debt um, as under control as we can. And then we're hiring tech writers. If anybody wants to be a tech writer, please. Um, it, is, it is a problem, and we acknowledge that. The, it's just that uh, it's unfortunate that it's faster to answer a Stack Overflow question than it is to get the properly worded full explanation with context out. So all set, all questions answered. No, there was one more question. You wanted to see me run, didn't you? <laughs> Um, hi. Um, just a quick question. So we see that Apple's moving really fast with Swift, and uh, we're still kind of waiting for the real Java 8 support and so on. So are there any news regarding that? And maybe if we can expect some other languages coming in the future. So I am not informed enough on that issue to make a comment on it. Um, it's a little bit outside the scope of what I'm working with on the platform side. Um, but if you do want more things, if you send me the message, I will see if I can find someone who can answer. OK, Sorry. thank you very much. <laughs> OK, everyone want to go get some coffee? No more. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like we're Thank done. You. Joanna, thanks again for this inspiring talk.